No excuse for not maintaining your food plots. Get out your sprayer. Spray the grass. Overseed. You know what to do. Come on, man. I'm going to get out and show you this thing. A little bit of clover in there, but it's mostly crabgrass and other kinds of weeds. So, uh, lots of thistle, thistle rosettes. Next year they'll go to flower. This one's going to flower. Uh, just mowing doesn't cut it. You got to get out here, do your fertilization, and do your um, spraying. You got to do it. Now, the other thing, I just learned something the hard way. I just check the trail camera out in the main food plot. It's supposed to be the destination food plot, even though it kind of looks like crap now because nobody maintained it. So, got a couple nice bucks on camera, but the cameras were out. There's two cameras there out for a month. So I only got what looks to be two decent bucks there'd be shooters here um and hardly any deer just a couple of does one fawn not looking good so population's way down here i think because of coyotes but i'm not sure what the reason is but one thing's for sure the food is subpar if you got the food you get the deer you know if you had the best food in the neighborhood here then deer would show up and they'd stick around. And then of course the other half of the equation is low pressure. You got to keep the pressure off your place. The other day I was out at my client Dan's and I don't know if you saw that video, but it's, it's a video that we were drilling in the fall food plots right through. We we're planting green right through the uh, summer food plot. Turned out pretty good. Lots of moisture. He's going to have it made. He has tons of bucks on his property. He has about 10 two-year-olds on 70 acres. And then he has some four-year-olds in there. I think two or three nice bucks. So I wanted to go down... We had done a clear cut last year and I wanted to go down there and show you what that is starting to look like. There's tall weeds in there and new new trees trying to grow. But I'm not going to go down there this time of year. It's time to stop intrusion on your bedding areas. So nobody goes down there until after deer season. And as much as I'd like to go down there and take some video, I don't want to chance it. It might not hurt anything, but I don't want to chance it because there's some real nice buck using that clear-cut area. It's about 10 acres. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and I hate to criticize other people's work and what they do for a living. More power to you if you can charge a lot of money and not produce anything. I don't know. Nothing of value. But recently I've had a couple of people have me out to their property that had these Midwestern gurus out to their property, paid them thousands of dollars. They gave them some BS and left. And that's it. No follow-up. They can't call with any questions. Uh, they don't get back to them. They don't return their emails or phone calls. I don't do it that way. I charge a lot less to begin with. And I give you something of value, you're going to end up with a timber cruise. And you're going to end up with actionable, real world projects that you can accomplish. I usually feel out a guy how much he's willing to do, how much he's capable of. When I write my plans, I don't just write a plan that is generic. Every plan is different because every landowner is different and every piece of property is different. So... There's nothing generic. So I'm going to go back and rehash this stuff. And we're going to try to 
get their properties straightened out. They were trying to do things with a chainsaw that, you know, this hinge, hinge cutting crap and all that, um, layers of cover and all that. Well, listen, thinning your woods, getting regeneration, and getting really good food plots that produce a lot of chow it, it, it's all it takes it sounds simple it's expensive and time consuming and you're gonna get results but you have to be willing to put the work in or spend the money either way there's no free lunch and when you think about it if you own a piece of land and you can shoot a big buck there every year rather than Let's say it cost uh, $4,000 to go on a five-day hunt in the Midwest, for instance. When you compare the two, if you spent $3,000 or even $2,000 on your property every year, or if you got the money out of some timber sales and rotated it back into your land, how much better off would you be? Plus, you know, traveling to the Midwest... For me, traveling is not fun anymore. It used to be, but I'd rather stay home and shoot a big buck than to travel and shoot a big buck. And, of course, it's a lot more rewarding when you created a habitat that would attract a big buck like that. Okay, so um, give me a call if you want to go over your land. It doesn't cost anything to make a phone call. All my information is down below. You can take a look at my, my food plot course, my free content that, about seed mixes. I have a, a free uh, seed mix instructional video down there. You can check it out down in the bottom on the link tree. And um, just call me up. I'll get your, your land up on Onyx and we'll discuss it, look it over, and see if there's something I can help you with. There might be something that you can resolve right over the phone. You don't have to pay anybody to do anything. So, uh, and then if you want me to come out and look at the property, we can set something up, get you fixed up. All right, well, thanks for listening and uh, to my rant, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.